Can I hear you shout amen? amen. Remember, the team and the general team of our program is still the spirit of upliftment. It's expected at the end of the exercise, at the end of this program, there must be an addition of blessings and breakthrough upon your life. That your amen is looking for chewing gum. At the end of this program, your name will be written, your testimony will be written with a gold biro that declares you are a winner. The Englishman says, he who laughed last, you are about to laugh that laugh. You are about to laugh the best laugh. You are about to make the noise in the town. Your testimony will cause commotion. People that never believe you will have somebody they will salute you after this meeting. People that never had confidence in somebody like you, they will bow and celebrate you. The people that has even lost even confidence about you completely, they will remember you again and came to a standstill for your sake. If you are that person, let me hear your email better. Tonight is a peculiar night. Eleven angels have been released to follow us on what we are going to do today. Anything that followed you this place, that thing will drop here today. Count it from today. Your story will change. All this while, from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, until today, we have been talking about anointing, anointing, anointing. Because this is what makes Christianity different from other religions. Christianity is not a religion, but it's a way of life. Christianity is all about power. What makes Christianity different is the power associated with our faith. It's the power associated with what we are talking about. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. We, we, we are told three persons in one, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. The Son is in the heaven. The Holy Spirit is one person out of the Trinity that is still in the world. He has been in the world since the day of the Pentecost. And has still been in the world. His assignment in the world will only end when the church will be raptured home. Out of the three persons in the, world, the Trinity, he's the only one that is still in the world. Convicting sinners of their sins, manifesting power of God, demonstrating his presence, and manifesting the reality of God. And what happens? The Holy Spirit is already around. We don't need to wait. He's already around. All we need to do is to welcome him and then celebrate him, and then continue with him. That's why when the Apostle Paul was talking in the book of Corinthians, he said, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Now, when do we know the grace of our Lord Jesus? It was when Christ died on the cross. When did we know the love of God? When Christ manifested himself. And when do we know the communion of the Holy Spirit? Is now that he's around with us. We only know him now. We commune with him. We fellowship with him. We relate with him. We share with him. He is now. And he is much more present now. And that's why the church of the later days is going to do more things than what the early church did. And that's why Jesus said, the work I did, you are going to do more. Greater works than this shall we do. And believe in God, there is a miracle church I've never experienced is about to manifest in these days. Oh, that your amen is too poor. Because we are in the days of his power. And the Bible says, in the day of his power, his people shall be willing. And this is the day, one of the days. And tonight, I'm sharing with us on what I titled, anointing for battle. Anointing for battle, or you being anointed for battle. Why? Because people don't like to hear issues of battle and war. People want everything to be peace, peace. But no matter how, how, we are born into battle. Whether you like it or not, you are bound to you are born to confront. You are born to fight. You are born for battle. And battle is one thing we meet every day of our life. Even if you don't need battle, battle will look for you. Even if you don't want trouble, trouble will look for you. Because it's wearing you everywhere, patrolling here and there. You discover that we are living in a world. We are born into it. And we are in it already. For us to survive, we need his anointing. And that's why we are talking tonight on talking about and 
anointing for battle or you being anointed for battle. But one thing with God is that God is a God that has given us victory even before the battle. Even before the war, you have already victory in your hand. And I prophesy to someone, whatever battle or challenge you are facing, at the end of this meeting, you are taking your testimony. Yes. You are gaining your victory. Yes. Can I hear that amen better? Yes. You discover that battle is one thing we will not run away from. No, you will run away from it. Battle is there. 24 hours we meet battle. Day by day we meet it, we see them. But there is one thing. The grace that carries you when the battle comes. The grace that alleviates you when the battle comes. Do you know my joy? The joy is that I'm not alone. The joy is that you are not alone. The joy is that you are not just alone. No, he said, behold, I am with you till the end of time. Which means you are not alone. You are not confronting it alone. He is with you. He is beside you. That's why Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say of the Lord, You are my stronghold. You are my defender. In you I will put my trust. No evil shall come near my home. No evil shall come near my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I look and behold the reward of the wicked that have gathered against me. He said a thousand will fall dead beside me. 10,000 around me, but it shall not come near me. He said he shall give his angels charge over me that I will not dash my feet against the stone. He is with me. He is not far from me. He is with me. All the days of my life he is with me. And as the Bible says in First John chapter 4 verse 4 he said for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And that's why Psalm 124 said, let the whole Israel say when the Lord, when our enemies gathered against us, they would have swallowed us life in victory. He said, but thanks be to God who has not allowed our enemies to triumph over us. He said, we were like beds trapped in the hunter's net, but the net is broken. He said, now we have escaped. He said, our help is in the name of the Lord. He that made heaven and earth. In Psalm 121, he said, the keeper of Israel will not sleep, neither will he slumber. He will protect you as you go. He will lead you as you come. He said, the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. He said, the keeper of Israel will watch over you. You're going out and you coming in. I declare tonight the Lord will preserve you in all your way. He will go with you in all your way. He will walk with you in all your way. He will take yourself in all your way. If you believe it, shout an amen like thunder. Our joy is that we are not alone. We are not confronting this battle alone. He is with us. He walks with us. He talks with us. He eats with us. He dines with us. He celebrates with us. Any step you are taking in this life, know it that you are not alone. He is with you. With your hand and shout amen. amen. So, and that's why we are confronted with this battle. And remember some time ago, I told you that there are reasons why we fight battle. Number one, remember that I told you one of the reasons why we fight battle is that we fight battle to enlarge our territory. If you want to expand in life, if you want to rise up in life, you want to succeed in life, you must fight to enlarge your territory. You must fight in order to expand. Anytime you want to grow more, there is battle you must fight. And if you must expand, you must fight. And I said, I Another reason why we fight battle is that we fight battle in order to demonstrate supremacy. You fight in order to prove to that person or to that enemy that you are greater. You fight in order to tell the devil, I have the champion in me. That's why each time Jesus comes out in the days of his time, the devil will cry and say, Ah, son of God, David, why have you come here to trouble us before time? They recognize that he is mightier than them. They recognize that he is greater than them. The reason why we fight is that we fight in in order to demonstrate supremacy to tell the devil and their cockhorn that we are on the winning side and you know those who are on the winning side they are the one that makes the loudest noise and when you are on the winning side you don't hide at the corner you don't hide at the corner you come out in the public that's why apostle paul said everything i did when i was with you i never did any of them in the corner i did them in the public jesus said to the jews why did you come to arrest me in this time why did you come at night to arrest Arrest me. All the things I did among you, I did it in the public. But why do you come at night to arrest me? Well, he said, no wonder this is your time. Because it's the time of your time. But I'm here to announce to you, the reason why you will receive this unction to fight is because there are supremacy. There are powers you need to prove a point upon. There are powers that have humiliated your family, humiliated your life. But when you take this unction today, everything around you will begin to respond to that power. 
that your amen should be better than yours. Can I hear you say it better? And you remember I said to you another reason why we fight. We fight in order, we fight battle in order to end controversy. If there are arguments and controversy over issue, if you are not the winner, they will continue. The controversy will continue. You, the controversy will continue. The battle will continue. When the enemy is making noise against you, all you need to do is to concentrate. Deal with the enemy and the enemy will not talk tomorrow. But I prophesy after today, any of them making noise in your family, they will check out of your house. They will check out of your house. Can somebody tell the devil you are a noisy fool? Can I hear you say amen for that? So another reason why I tell you that we fight is that you fight the battle in order to end insult. There are people the devil have insulted for a long time. I remember the story of the uh, prophet Elisha when children were calling him, Bahed, Bahed man. And while it was, they were insulting him, Elisha became angry and then he called bear out from the bush and devoured the 40 children. He, he, he did that and other children kept their mouth. Are you with me? So if he didn't fight to end that insult, tomorrow, even up to tomorrow, they will still be telling him, Elijah, Bamalam. But the moment Elijah did that, tomorrow, everybody kept quiet. Why? Because he fight in order to end insult. What will happen today? We promote somebody. If you are the person, let your amen be like thunder. Your own anointing will open way for you. It will make way for you. In the name of Jesus. There are so many of us here passing through many insults. Insult in our family. Insult in our home. Insult in our business. People don't live long in your family. It, the worst of all is that older men in the village are becoming younger. And the younger ones are dying. You see that as an insult. When you come to the village, the younger ones are no more. But the elderly men, instead of them to die and pass, they are becoming refreshed and refreshed and refreshed. That is an act of witchcraft. If there is any of them in your village today, they anointing coming on you will silence them it will silence them in the name of jesus well to be fast and then to, to think what we have to do another reason why i said we we we, we fight battle if we fight battle in order to possess or to possess our possession there are so many of people that have lost so many things but when you fight you fight to take it back whatever the enemy have taken from you you reclaim it back and tonight is going to happen here i say it will happen here I, I am a bit fast because the way what, what we are going to do today is going to be hot. So I'm not going to take time in explaining one by one. But let us look at the Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3, 4 and 5. Somebody say, I shall be anointed. Are you there? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse number 3. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down the imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought, and make them to obedient of Christ. Verse 6 says, after you have proved your act of loyalty, that's good news for you. But my Bible here said, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedient when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, good news will always say, after you have proved your act of loyalty, you will have every right to punish any act of disloyalty. That is good news for you. So when you prove your obedience, your, your royalty, your, your loyalty to God, your submissive to God, when you submit to God, then you can now take the right to punish any act of disloyalty. Now, in other words, when the moment you, your obedience is complete with God, you can now stand and then rebuke forces. That's why in fellowship, maybe if you have been in charismatic fellowship, before we bind and cast out, we now submit ourselves to God and confess our sin, proving, making ourselves obedient to God. It's by the time you are sure you have reconciled with God that you cannot tell the devil, waka, shige, you cannot. But if you 
your obedience is not complete and you are telling devil shake he will tell you after all I see you that place where you go and the devil will now see a loophole where he will attack your back so your obedience must be complete before you stop any act of disloyalty and that's why I said for our way of weapon the weapons of our warfare is not gone it's not viral it's not physical battle he said the weapons of our warfare he said they are mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds. Oh boy, there is power that is might. There is power that is powerful. There is power you may not see someone. Oh, physically we're gone, but something coming out of him or her is more deadly than cruise missile. There is people that you see them, they look so ordinary, but they carry something that is more dangerous than atomic bomb. Why? Because the power of God in your life is so greater than the weapons of the devil, than the weapons of forces of darkness. I remember one of our sisters, she walked into a bank PhD to withdraw money. As soon as she withdrew money from the bank, she was coming out and they never knew, she never knew there were gangs of guys that were waiting in order to shut and collect the money. As she was there, she just opened the car and she just dropped the bag and entered. Somebody just pointed a gun on her and said, the money or your life. The woman said to her, not at all, not money, not even my life you can't take. The guy fled up, pulled the trigger. The gun refused, pull it again, the thing refused to go, pull it again, the thing refused to go. The boy wanted to check what happened. Maybe there is no bullet. The bullet came out and knocked the guy down there. And the woman turned the car and went away. I prophesy, the oil on you will finish all your battle and fight. We turn around and fight your battle. If you believe it, shout yes! I don't know how many people that have gathered against you in their places. Maybe they are doing their charm, doing their incantation against you. Get ready. There is something that will land on you that will bury them by fire. There is something in you that will bury them by fire. Can I hear you shout at him and better? When a man carries that weapon, you may not carry paper, you may not carry biro. When you carry this oil, it doesn't matter how many people that want to fight you in the office. The oil on your head will fight them. The grace you carry will fight them. If you believe the shot, yes! I don't want to dwell much there. But when you carry this oil, brother, the Bible said, our weapon is not gone. It's not bullet. It's not nothing. No, 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 no. It, it's not the physical battle. He said, the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty through God. Mighty, mighty. No wonder the Bible said, lift up your heads, all you gate, and be you lifted up everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in. And they say, who is that king of glory? They say, the Lord mighty. That same mighty thing is about to land on you. That thing that make God mighty is about to land on you. Can I hear you shout at him and better? That mighty thing is what we are talking about. That mighty thing that is great. That mighty thing that is so powerful. That mighty thing that radiates your life. That mighty thing. You may not even know it. You may not even know you carry such a thing. But when it comes to attack, the mighty thing will react. The mighty thing will get up. Tonight is about to land on somebody here. Because enough is enough. The devil have so met so many of us. Met so many people and their family up. But tonight, you are the one that will avenge what the enemy have done in your family. Can I hear your amen better? And then we said, that mighty thing that the Lord is going to do is going to be the weapon the Lord is going to give us tonight. If you carry this oil, if you carry this power, oh boy, it doesn't matter how many of them that gathers against you. I remember when the government of Enugu State was having problem with uh, Father Mbaka then. They gathered against him and, they, you know, people gathered and they used, they, 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 remember they carried God, they caught him with God and they began to shoot on him. Pa, 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 pa. And while they were shooting the gun, they thought the man was dead. And they never knew that all the bullets were entering into the Bible and he used the Bible and captured the bullets and the guys left. The man got up and found his way. The other day he was in his room. They set the house on fire. People, he was sleeping already. He was sleeping already. The whole house was on fire. People didn't know what was happening and then all of a sudden all that people living in the father's house came out. They said, but where is father? They said, father is still sleeping. No. Father was still sleeping. He never knew and suddenly he said, somebody came and tapped me and he woke up. 
he discovered everywhere was covered with darkness. There was smoke everywhere. There was no space for him to escape. But all of a sudden, he heard the the louvers of the window and pulled one of the glasses, and then the thing cleared off, and he jumped through the window. When he came out through the window, people said, "Ah, Father, thank God you have escaped." And the fire was going up, up to the upstairs, and that was where the mustrance and the blessed sacrament was. And Father shouted, "My God, the fire is going where Jesus was." They say, "Father, don't." Don't enter. If you enter, you will die. Ah, how will you jump into the fire? Father said, who among you came to wake me up? They said, nobody. He said, but the same man that woke me up, fire is about to burn him. I must go and bring him out. He removed his cassock and then removed all that shirt, jumped into the fire. He proceeded. People said, Father, don't finish you. As soon as he entered, he brought out Jesus from the mustrance and walked through the fire and came out from there. And everybody saw him and they began to shout, Somebody say power. Say power. Hey. When you got this power, it doesn't matter how many that gathered against you. It doesn't matter those that hate you. That thing in you will gas. You know, that's why I say that thing in you. There is something God made. You know, everything that God created in this world, God gave it what we call defensive uh, mechanism. So that thing that makes you, pro that gives you strength to be protected against the enemy. God never created anything and never gave it anything to defend itself. God created you, gave you something to defend you. And that's why the church, he has given us the anointing power. He gave us that oil that runs on our head. It doesn't matter people that gathered against you. But when that oil reacts, no matter their numbers, that oil will silence them and close their mouth. That oil will make them to shut up their mouth. After today, your own oil will speak. I say your own oil will speak. Can I hear you shout amen? Now, on the other way around, when we look at the power, what are we using the power for? I said we fight battles. After the fight or battle, there are forces we need to deal with. If you get this auction, you must know that you must. there are battles you must fight. There are battles you must confront. And so many of us are facing so many battles without knowing how to confront them and without knowing what actually is going on in their life. I want to share with us Again, before we pray, that even if God, anytime God is about to raise a man, he gives him power to fulfill that assignment. How many of you remembered Moses? When the Lord was calling Moses to, to deliver the people of Israel out from the bondage in the land of Egypt, the Bible said the Lord called him and said to him, what do you have in your hand? He said, it's a staff. And God said to him, drop it on the ground. He dropped it on the ground. He became a snake. And God said to him, pick it up. He said, I'm sending you back to Pharaoh. Go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You know, it's a long story, but, but, but what I want to bring out as a point there was that when Moses said to the Lord, what name will I tell my people? Because when I go there and tell them that the Lord has sent me, they will ask me, what is the name of that God that I've sent you to come and deliver us? What name will I tell them? And then suddenly he said, tell them, I am that I am. Now, let me ask you, if you ask somebody his name and the person tells you I am, I, that I am is my name, has the person told you his name? No. The person didn't tell you his name. And what happened? In English, the, the word arm, they said, is a continuous verb. And there is this language, this, this word in English, what they call transcends. Transcend simply means beyond the ability of man or beyond the reach of man. When God said to Moses, tell them that I am, that I am. In every nation, every nation have their God and have the name of their God. And they have their work and have their limit of operation. Like the God of Baal is a demon, is, is a deity, is a God in the time, in, in the days of, 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 of Moses, the Baal, they call it a God that fights for war. For example, in Igbo land, we have a God they call Amadioha, which they call the God of thunder. He fights with thunder. And there is another one they call Ekuloche in Igbo. is the one they call the God of commerce. And then we have Agwishi. Agwishi is a God they call the family deity demon. In Yoruba, there is a, there, there is a God they call the God of steel. They call the other one the God of fertility. But these gods, they have their name and have their limit of operation. Agwishi cannot leave his job as Agwishi and do the work of Amadioha. Amadioha is limited only to the god of thunder. He cannot do the, god, the work of Agwishi. He cannot do the work of uh, Ekuloche. But God said to Moses, you are asking me to know the name
name. That if I give you a name, then it means I am limited to my operation. But go and tell them, I am not limited. I am, which simply means I am a God that continues. I can work for you as a God of thunder, as a God of fertility, as a God of fruitfulness. In other words, God is a God that continues. I prophesy to you from today, nothing is impossible with your God. If you believe it, shout yes! So there is no limit to him. And that's why he said to Moses in the book of Numbers chapter 22. He said to him, Moses, is there any limit to my power? There is no limit to what I can do. I have the ability to, to destroy. I have ability to repair. I have ability to create. I have ability to terminate. In other words, power is in my hand. If you are serving a God that has power, why do you fear common man? I'm here to tell you, if you know the God that created man, then man will be like a dust in your hand. And I prophesy today, anybody that plan to kill you, God will kill them. God will silence them. If you believe it, shout yes. He said, I am. And then he empowered Moses. And when Moses came to Pharaoh, did he waste time? No matter who you are, you are important before God. If God can use a stamina, he can use you. Look, nobody, I keep saying it, listen, nobody's better than you. You are a champion and a great person on your field. You are so important. If God could use Moses. And the Bible said, look, look, oh, if there are any man that God has ever used, he talked to that person in vision and in dream. But with God, Moses, now face, oh boy, a stammerer. A stammerer. But Moses came there with anger and said, let my people go. Pharaoh was even trying to say, who is that your God? Pharaoh didn't finish. Moses now said, let me show you. If Moses had known before that that staff in his hand was a serpent, he wouldn't have run away from Egypt. He wouldn't have gone to media in the first place. But he didn't know. Oh, that's why sometimes we don't know. If you know what you carry, you will not be crying like somebody when God don't die. If you know what you carry, you will not be running from pole to pole. Suddenly, he said, now I will show you that I have encountered God. He carried his step. Bam. <laughs> Pharaoh laughed. Do he own. And Moses was one kind man. He waited until after his own. Swallowed and finished. He went now and held his snake at the tail. And then he returned back to the staff. That was the day the empire of Pharaoh was captured. Tonight, there is an oil coming on you. An anointing that will propel you to take over what the enemy has collected from you. You will swallow back what the enemy has stolen from you. You will take back what the enemy has taken from you. Can I hear you say that amen better than your neighbor? So anytime God wants to use a man, he equipped him. Why am I saying so? Some of us here now, God is going to use you. I'm not talking today. If there is anybody that has problem, people are going to lay hand today. You will do it. You will see. You will see that God can use you to deliver. You will see that God can use you to set free. You will see that God can use you to uproot and to plant. You will see here. It's not far. It's not far. Today, it will come up to work in your life. It will come up to work in your life. Because God cannot give you power for you to keep it. He has given you the power to use it. He has given you the anointing to you. That's why I begin by telling you, it's not only in prayer, even in business, even in your office, anywhere you enter, use it. Use it. At the labor room, use it. Wherever you enter, use it. Let the power be demonstrated. I, 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 was, I, I was invited. A, a, a woman was in labor for two days. Back, 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 back. They did inducement. The child, no, the, the thing, no show way. Try, try. At the time when they were trying to force the woman to deliver the baby, no way. The nurses have used the razor. Tear the woman lap. Still, she cannot push. And to do operation was Wahala. The man rushed and said, new man, I'm finished. When the man came, his hand was on the top of his car. Brother, I'm finished. Brother, I'm finished. I said, you are not finished. What is the problem? He said, my wife, my wife. The woman was in, in terrible. When the man came, I eventually learned. He said, the woman, no grief. If you come there, the woman will shout on you. But her strength was going. As soon as I walked into the labor room, suddenly, they closed the door. I said, no. She said, who is there? The woman screamed again, who is there? I said, it's me. He said, who? He said, brother, I said, yes. I said, it is well with you. She said, huh. As soon as she was saying, huh, the baby came out. Simple. No prayer. No binding. No losing. I pray for 
for you. Your presence alone will open the door. Your availability will open the door. Your appearance alone will open the doors. Let me hear your amen better. You, what you carry when there are calamities and trouble, as soon as you appear, the devil must bow. When you carry the oil, it doesn't matter the enemies that surround you. It doesn't matter how many of them that have been fighting and tormenting your family. The Lord called Moses, empowered him. Do you know all the things that Moses did in Egypt? It was full of battle. This one, he do. Do this one, he do his own. The other one, he did. He did it until Pharaoh get tired. And Pharaoh said, oh yeah, Moses, leave. Today, if the no release you by choice, they will release you by force. Can I hear you say amen? amen? They must have option. Something is in you. You may not know, but today, you got to know it. Today, you will know it. Today, you will experience it. That unction for battle. Do you think that what killed Goliath was ordinary stone? You saw stone, but there was power behind that stone. There was power behind the stone. It was not an ordinary the Bible said to us, a handkerchief of Paul were used to heal the sick. Do you think it was an ordinary handkerchief? No! Power was with the hanky. The Bible said the shadow of Peter will pass and heal the sick. You think it was ordinary shadow? Power! They say power! When this power lands on a man, it changes everything about you. It doesn't matter how the forces that are gathered against you. It doesn't matter how many of them that want to swallow your family. There are people that witch will chop and go free, but there are people the witch will chop and the witch will die. I tell you today, your own case is a different case. Your case is a different case. Can I hear you shout at him and better? When God picked Gideon, he wanted to use Gideon and say, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. Go Gideon and say, ah. He said, you are a mighty man of Gideon now shout. I say, where are those miracles? We hear our papa, papa tell us, say you they do. Like there are some people we cry and say, man of God. There are no prayer why I never pray. In fact, they are God they do partial. In fact, I, I have prayed all manner of prayer, yet my problem remain. Hey, you never meet power. Gideon was busy telling God, ah, where are those things they tell us, say God they do. And you allow the Midianites, they are enslaving us. We farm, they carry almost 80% of our farm. You still tell me, say, I'm a mighty man of valor. Who are which kind God you be? While he was still complaining, he said, look, the Lord has prepared you. You will go. And what, the last word he said to me, he said, go in thy strength and in thy might. Topa shaka. That might is what we are talking about, the anointing. He said, go in thy power and in thy might. For you shall deliver your people out of the hands of the Midianites. And you will destroy the Midianites like a man. When he went and called people to go to war. How many thousand? 33,000. God said to him, ah, I don't need multitude though. Go and tell them, anyone where married wife knew, where they think about a wife, make it go. To his greater surprise, 22,000 withdraw. Hey! He went back up to God and said, God, I have at least uh, 13,000. God said, still go back. Go and tell them, anyone that is mine, they shake, make a return. 10,000 went. Till they remain 300. Gideon said, but what is the 300 going to do? He said, look, I don't need multitude. <laughs> I don't need plenty. I don't, you don't need armor. You don't need Mark 4. You don't need AK-47. There is, there is cruiser missile in you. Urakatabu yagada. Hirekete mayagadabo. Ah! Ingenactity. Start a generator on name. Start the thing. Let the thing be gingered. Ukakata payakata. Rekete mayaga dubarakata. Oh, Lord, arise in me. Let your unction rise in my spirit. And before you know it, things will begin to rise. Kada, haya, haya. Block by block, block by block. Before you know it, linter. Before you know it, roofing. And suddenly, the power comes up to the peak. And then you begin to release. Whoa. Gideon was surprised and God gave him victory with 300. And he said, you will destroy the Midianites just like a man. Judges chapter 6 from verse number 21 down and then Judges chapter 7 from verse 1 to down. You discover he utterly destroyed them. Not because of anything, but because of the anointing. 
because of the anointing. There are so many of us here, a lot of things have been going wrong in your family. Get ready now. You are carrying the oil in order to lose your family today. Yeah. That thing that has been swallowing people in your family, that thing will be swallowed today. Yeah. That thing that has been killing people in your family, that thing will be killed today. Yeah. That thing that has been frustrating people, that thing will be frustrated today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he said, suddenly, God also raised another man by name Samson. Anytime God raises a man, he equips the man. He says, Samson, oh yeah, you are going to bring your people out from the hand of the Philistines. Though Samson next up on the way, but yet, that assignment was still upon his life. The Bible says, with the jaw of an animal, Samson killed thousands. Lake With the jaw of an animal, he killed and cleared them. Lion came, Samson grabbed this lion on the mouth. Tear the mouth of the lion. Brethren, there is power that makes things to happen. I pray for you. The oil you carry will embarrass and disgrace your enemies. Will embarrass and disgrace your enemies. If you believe it, let your amen be the loudest. Karakatapusha. Brothers and sisters, anytime God wants to take you somewhere, he equips you. The reason why he planted in your family is that he knew there are trouble. He wants you to be the one to stop that trouble. You know, you know in, in, in physics, they keep telling us that everything continues on the same parallel until there is an external force that compels it to do. It will continue like that in your family unless somebody comes up and says enough is enough. Death will continue. Barrenness will continue. Poverty will continue. Unless Unless somebody comes to the family and say, no, it must stop in my time. And someone that will do it is here. Somebody that will do it is here. Let me hear your amen again. Because after today, money will begin to answer to you and your family. You will be running for money. Money go, they come. You will sit down. Money go, they come. Listen, listen you know, when you carry this oil, money looks for you. You don't look for money. Money, look for you. The only thing you do is that you add labor. At least put up your own strength and do something. But money will look and pursue you. When you carry oil, I keep saying it. Any man of God that knew his calling don't need to go and beg for money. At all. If you know what you carry, you don't beg. You don't go and fall down on men and say, please come and launch this for me. Come and be my bazaar. No. No. The oil produces the money. Ha! I've met things. Oh. I've seen things. Oh. I've seen. And that's why in my whole life, nobody can come up and say, IG is owing in one cobble. And yet, I may not be the richest. <laughs> but I can own you shishi. I can't. If God called me in this assignment, he must back me in what I'm doing. I don't need to come and fall down for people to beg them money. In your life, if there is an unction on you, the power you carry, ikalabo shata, leke dedu, baleye kete mayagada, the thing you carry in you will distinguish you. It will separate you. Look, People may do like you, but they cannot be you. When you come up your own, we'll just be the different. I prophesy from today, wealth will begin to answer for you. Resources will begin to answer. Breakthrough will begin to answer. Miracle will begin to answer. If you believe it, let me hear your amen better. I pray for you. God will open doors for your word. We'll open doors for your word. If you believe in shout an amen. When he sends you, he backs you up. He backs you. Oh, the next thing that happens. You, do, you, do, do you know one of the things we are going to confront now? Hi. Uh, let, let me not talk about other people. God used David. If any man God wants to use, he will equip. So, it, we establish that fact that if he will use you, to do something in your father's compound, he must equip you. Now, you are not going to be among the people running away from your village because people will kill you. You are anybody that dig any grave will enter that grave. Yeah. Are you? Are you are not. I say anybody that dug any grave will enter there. Yeah. So you are not among the company of them that runs from their father's compound because of fear. 
Are you with me? If you are landing any time in your father's village, they will look and say, eh? This person, where we think, say, don't die. Now, wow. They will just be moving. And before you know it, 17 bolts are not going to lose. From 17, 19, we lose. And before you know it, <laughs> ah, from Madis, I've been at this psychiatric in where we have game. Why? Because of the oil. You cannot leave your father's house. You cannot run away from your parents' home. You will not. And let me tell you, today I'm going to pray for anybody who has a, a property. Maybe you started building in your father's house and you have not completed. Or maybe you are building and you have not completed and the thing is on standstill for two or three years. No money. The day you started, you wanted to patch your mama house. One room and add to the one because the building is linking. And the moment you wanted to patch it, they attacked your finance, attacked your money. And today you are not eating. You will come to this altar. Before this year end, bait me. Every one of them that gathered against you, God will disgrace them. And that project must be completed. It must be completed. It must be completed. Let me show you something we are going to do. Kira Shakata. Can somebody read Second Kings? What we are going to fight now. Second Kings chapter 21, verse 19 and 25. Anybody close to the microphone, if you get it, please read. One of the enemy we are going to confront now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ammon was 22 years old uh -huh. when he became king. Uh -huh. And he reigned in Jerusalem two mm -hmm. years. Yeah. His mother's name was Meshulemet, uh -huh. daughter of Haruz. Uh -huh. She was from Jotba. Uh -huh. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord uh -huh. as his father Manasseh had done. He did evil as his father. Uh -huh. Go ahead. He walked in all the ways of his father. Mm -hmm. He worshipped the idols his father. Now, mark worshipped. that word. He walked in the way of his father. And how many years did he reign? Two years. Did he reign long? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. My sister. He worshipped the idols his father had worshipped and bowed down to them. He forsook the Lord, the God of his fathers. And did not walk in the way of the Lord. Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated the king. Now, let's just stop there. The point I want you to pick there, number one, was that this young man, Ammon, the Bible said he reigned only two years and died. Why? The Bible said he did evil in the sight of the Lord and then walked in the way of his father. He followed the footstep of his father. The first enemies we are going to confront today is the power and the enemy of your father's house. There are powers that your family inherited which you need not to touch. Never you do the evil your father did. If you are a man here, if your father was a womanizer, if you got married, never try it. If your father was a chain smoker, never try it. If your father never loved the wife, the mother, your mother, never you follow the way of your father. The Bible said this young man followed, did evil and walked in the way of his father. So man, I met a man who told me after all, my father married three wives. If I, if I, if, if I go and pregnant another girl outside, is it evil? Then watch your end. Never you follow the way of your father. If your father was not a righteous man, never follow his way. Never follow his footstep. The Bible said he walked in the way of his father. That is evil. And he ended more disastrous than his father. Brethren, there are men, there are women that are in bondage. Down. There are people that what has afflicted their family has kept them in bondage. I don't know your own, but what I'm here for, that in the name that is above every name, that tonight by the anointing of the Lord, if there is such a power holding you, it must leave you alone. It must leave you alone. The Bible said he walked in the way of his father and he ended shamelessly. 
if your father never cared for, the, for your mama, never you try what your father did. And that's why I keep on telling people in, in deliverance cases, when we come into deliverance issues, if you come into a family that is polygamous, you have so many big deliverance process to go. Kaya kata. If your father married, not that maybe your mom died and your, or, or the first wife died and your father went and remarried, but because your father, while he was alive, went to bed with other women, and then by reason of anyhow, the family came to be two, come to be three, you have so many battles to fight. So many! And that's why if you marry a man that came from a polygamous family, rather than thinking that all is well, drag that man to God for deliverance. Or else he cannot stay alone with you. He cannot stay without cheating on you. Cure E-D. is in the gene. It's in the blood. It's in the chromosomes. There are some certain problems you will have if you go to hospital. Doctors will ask you, did your papa have it or your mom have it? They said it's in the gene. It's hereditary. This kind of issues are hereditary. You keep wondering, why do I look for a job? I don't get a job. Have you dealt with the powers from your father's house? Have you dealt with the enemy from your father's home? And that's one of the reasons why this oil must come. Do you know one thing? There are things you will forget, but the devil don't forget. There are things you will think he don't go, but the devil will tell you he doesn't go. It's still there. This man walked in the way of his father and he ended up uselessly. Please, if your father is a drunkard, if you see Star, run. If you see Golda, run. If your father was a drunkard, if you see Common Pami, run. Let's you know, the moment you start it, you can't stop it. The moment you start, if your father is a smoker, hey, don't try your taba. Don't try your taba. Talk less of, let me try some more. If you start, it's hard to stop. This young man went in the way and ended the way his father ended. Finally, before we pray, listen to this. Do you know why Jesus was called the lion of the tribe of Judah? I will still share it with you. Judah was a man whose son had a wife but could not pregnant the wife. One day, the Bible told us, the young lady by name Tamar decorated herself and was in the corner. And the father-in-law, Judah, went and slept with her. And then when it was discovered that Tamar was pregnant, they shouted, oh, hey, People came and told the father-in-law, Judah, and said, we discovered that your daughter, your, your son's wife is pregnant. But it's not your son that pregnant him. How manage? She is now a prostitute though. Judah shouted, bring her out and kill her. But Judah forgot that the day he sleep with that woman, he forgot in blanket, forgot in staff, Forgot in bed. Because he did the thing sharp sharp. As soon as Judah left. Tamar collected those things. When they were checking Tamar to kill Tamar. She brought those things out. And lifted it up and said. The man that owns this thing. Is responsible for this pregnancy. The Bible said. As soon as Judah. Saw them. He was shocked. He remembered the day he did that thing. And he said, leave her alone. She is more righteous than me. And the Bible recorded in Genesis chapter 38. That Tamar carried that pregnancy. Until the time of delivery. We will know what we are going to deal with tonight. Oh, Shatakama. Now, but do you know. That the reason why Israel had no king until David. Israel had no king because God have told them. That a bastard should not be in the congregation of the Lord until how many generations? Tenth generation. And that's why Israel had no king. Saul was given to them out of their choice, not according to the will of God. It was in David that Israel had king. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Are you there? Now read from, for us from verse number 1. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Now, if they will 
count the genealogy of Jesus, people also need to count your own. Your root must also be traced. They count it in order to trace the root from where Jesus came from. Now, when you look at that, it said, now and King David. Why is it that others, nobody was placed as king in all this generation until he came to David? Just because of a, 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 a casual relationship between a family in the past. The Lord have told them that a bastard should not be in the congregation of the Lord. And you know, God promised that through the tribe of Judah, kings shall be in Israel. But that privilege was denied until David. Nobody rose up to be king until David. All of them mixed it. How many of our families have lost our spiritual life, rights and benefits just because of something that happened in the lineage so far back again. If you look at this family, that problem entered through Judah. And then if you look at the family in the whole tribe of Judah, sexual sin became their problem. After this man, Wahala, you know the story of David. David slept with another man's wife. By name who? Uriah. Killed the man in the battlefield. And the woman was Bathsheba. Killed the man in the battlefield. Took another man's wife. That was not enough. Oh. Sexual sin entered into the family. The son of David slept with his father's wife. Another son of David. Solo married 700. Plus, plus 300 concubines. 1,000. World record. In the Guinness book of record, nobody has ever tried that. Till today. Because of sexual sin. And that was not enough. The same sin was flowing within the blood lineage. Suddenly, Jesus appeared. When Jesus appeared, they were watching him. Hey, yeah. Uh, this thing, we don't kill your papa, papa. You are doing good work. The thing will soon kill you. Hey. If Jesus will do miracle, they will appreciate it, but they will say, hey, yeah. But that same thing will kill your papa. It will soon kill you. Ah. Hey, yeah. We know your family. Now, women be their wahala. Jesus, your own go soon end. Hey, yeah. As if they were watching him, suddenly Jesus died. They buried him. No woman wahala. Resurrected from the dead. No woman wahala. He wanted to ascend into heaven. They said to him, oh God, Jesus, come on. We want to crown you today the lion of the tribe of Judah. Which means that what disgraced others in our family did not disgrace you. Somebody here today, what frustrated your family? Oh, will not frustrate your life. Will not frustrate your life. Will not frustrate your life. Jesus came with the same anointing. He came in the same power and with the same oil. He delivered the family. He broke the yokes of Satan. Delivered the entire generation. The generational problem in the family. Jesus stood with the anointing and then broke the power and said to Satan, that where is your strength? Where is your ability? And he triumphed over death. He triumphed over sin. He conquered sin. He conquered death. And then he said all authority, all powers in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth have been given to me. Brothers and sisters in this church right now, there is an anointing coming upon you tonight that will end every disgrace in your family. The anointing is coming on you to end disgrace. It's coming to end insult. It's coming to end frustration. If you believe it, shout fire. Shout it again. Shout it again. Shout. When Jesus did that, he came with the anointing. No wonder the book of John chapter 1, verse number 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And in verse 4, he said, And this word came and then manifested among us. In verse number 11, he said, This word came to his own, but they received him not. But as many that received him, he gave them power, in verse 12, to become the sons and daughters of God. In verse number 13, the Bible said, And this word was made flesh. 
flesh and dwelt among us. We even saw his glory. In John chapter 2, the same word with the oil came to the wedding at Canaan. They said their wine has finished. And the mother went to him and said to him, they had no wine. The same Jesus said, ah, it is not yet my time. But mother said to them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. The same day he turned the water into wine. The same word appeared in John chapter 3. In Nicodemus came to him and he said unless a man is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom. In verse number 16 of John chapter 3 he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him they shall not die but have an everlasting life. In John chapter 4 he met a woman at the pool of Samaria and the woman said Jesus said to her give me water to drink and the woman said you are a Jew and I'm a Samaria we don't have anything in common and Jesus said to her if you know the one that is asking you of this water you will ask me to give you the water that you will drink and you will not come back here again and the Bible said he was talking about the spirit that those who believe in him are going to receive in John chapter 5 he met a man at the pool of Bethsaida in verse 1 for 38 years, the man have staggered and suffered. And Jesus came to him and said to him, do you want to be made whole? The man said, I don't have anybody to help me. Jesus said, if you don't have anyone to help you, I will be the one to help you. Rise up and take up your mat and walk home. And in verse 24, he said and 25, that the days is coming when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and them that hear him, they shall come back to life. In John chapter 6, he said to them, I am the bread of life. In John chapter seven the same word the same jesus said to them all you that is thirsty come to me and drink the water of life free out from your belly shall flow the rivers of waters of life in john chapter 8 a woman was caught in adultery they wanted to stone her and jesus said to them if there is any of you that have not seen be the first to cast stone on her all of them went away and jesus said to her go and sin no more i do not condemn you in verse 36 he says that the word he said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free in verse 38 he said if the son of man shall make you free you will be free indeed in John chapter 9 he said to them I am the light of the world in John chapter 10 he said to them the chief came to steal to kill and to destroy but I came that they might have life and have it in abundance in John chapter 11 in the house of Mary and Martha he said to them I am the resurrection I am the life no matter how many days that Lazarus has been in the grave he can come back to life. In John chapter 12 he said to them, unless a grain of a wheat fell to the ground, it remained only a single grain. But when it grows up, it becomes a rich harvest. In John chapter 13, he said to them, love one another. In John chapter 14, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. In John chapter 15, he said to them, I am the vine. You are the branches. Cut off from me. You can do nothing. In John chapter 16, Jesus said to them, in the world, you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world in John chapter 17 he said to them I will not leave you like an orphan I will send the Holy Ghost to you he will live with you he will live in you in John chapter 18 he said to them as my father sent me in the same way I am sending you in John chapter 19 when he was on the cross he cried in a loud voice it is it is your family trouble is finished tonight your trouble is finished tonight your battle is finished tonight your challenge is finished tonight your problem is finished tonight your war is finished tonight if you believe it turn around and say fire yeah 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 turn around and say fire yeah 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 turn around and say fire yeah 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 somebody say hey somebody say hey hey Remain standing. Power is coming on you. Those that challenged you before, they will see fire tonight. And if you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. I would like you to do it as quick as possible. Why? Because whatever prayer we are saying here for you to benefit and be part of it. Oh, build and develop your spiritual life. 
When you listen, listen to me well. I want you to learn this. If you are able to see in the spirit, leave what happens on the physical. If you are able to capture the spirit, they will all and all day for foundation again. Physical is just a minor issue. You will just see things opening because you have handled the spirit. If you are able to capture in the spirit, physical is just nyama nyama. And I want to teach you this. If you are going to a company to look for a job, arrest that company before you go. You are looking for an appointment in an office, arrest that office. Arrest the director. Capture them in the spirit. Release. When you go physically, it will open. Amen. But when you, you just when you just carry your paper, may I go submit my CV? Don't you know? The same job you are looking for. Over 4,000 people are looking for it. And there are some people when they preach their CV, they will look it to the altar of the devil and promise, if I get this job, my three months salary, now you get them. And you just print your own from the system, carry it in the wrong worker. Before God, whoever pays the highest price takes the throne. The world is controlled by sacrifice. And that's why the Bible said that the foundation of this world was laid by the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. Even before Jesus was born, his blood has been slain. So the world is controlled by sacrifice. I told you if you go to Ghana, the, Ash the tribe of Ashanti in Ghana answers the name of their mothers, not the name of their father. If not now, there some of them are changing. What was the secret? Because of sacrifice. Whoever pays the sacrifice takes the throne, takes the position. You are a politician. Do you want to go far? Capture your members in prayer. Lauren Babu, when he was having a problem with Quatara, they told us in the ass catch of Cote d'Ivoire, Babu went and built an altar that held the city of Abidjan in hand. When the soldiers of Alan Quatara entered, uh, entered Abidjan, they did not shoot even a, a single bullet. They proceeded to that altar. Immediately they brought down that altar. They captured Babu the same day. Altar is where power is. If you are able to capture the spirit, the physical is just a small thing. The moment you are able to capture the spirit, the physical one is just... That's why some people kill people in the spirit. They will use small baby, tie them, the neck, they, they draw it in. I'm also people, this witch people. They go, they use that toy baby, they will be tying clothes, the person there for bed though. As they are tying the small toy, the person on the bed is saying, you and when they cut the thing, person die on the bed. Because they have captured the person in the spirit. Build the spirit. Build the spirit. And then the physical things will just be jarred. The physical one. Sometimes when you kill in the spirit, when you capture in the spirit, in the physical, the problem is still there. But on daily basis, it will fade away. It will just go. Because you have succeeded in the spirit. Build in the spirit. You are looking for a job. Build in the spirit. Build. Develop it. Look, how will you have a problem? And you are judging yourself by the type of fine clothes where you wear. You are considering wear. Stop wearing fine clothes. Wear dirty one and get what you want. Ah! I don't mean that you are going to wear dirty clothes to patrol along the street. But give out yourself to sackcloth and fasting. Subject yourself to God. Build the spirit. Capture in the spirit. And in the physical, you will smile. Spirit. Develop the spirit. You know, anywhere I go, anywhere I preach, I will always ask people, if you know what people paid in order to cage your family, you will hurry up and do your own quick. If you know how many ram and cows Foul chickens they kill in order to close your family. So many of us, when it comes for us to offer and drop on the altar of God, you begin to check how much you have. But the people that caged your family, did they check so? How many rams were killed in order to enslave your family? How many, how many cows did they bury in order to cage you? 
I, I, I told you when I went to Bauchi, uh, one place in Bauchi, Nazareth, if you get to Azare in Bauchi State, you will see the face of a lion. I went there, the Christian Association of Nigeria invited me there for a program. Because they say strangers there know they may come. When I came for the program, we went to see the Emir. When we were about to enter there, the face of the lion was there. When we entered his house, the face of a lion was there. And when we entered into the palace, we saw a roasted lion. And on top of it, they wrote, Ashiga de Kaya Akuma de Gemu. You will carry load, enter. You will go back empty handed. In Hausa, Ashiga de Kaya Akuma de Gemu. And that's why no stranger that enters that city ever makes it. Because they have captured the spirit, the state, the state, the, the, the town, and the realm of the spirit that no stranger here will make it. If you land in such area to make an investment, I wonder how you will end your investment. Capture the spirit. Make sacrifice. If you are coming here, whatever sacrifice the Lord lays in your hand, you will know what you will carry. Come to this altar. Tell God now that I carry the anointing. I am reversing whatever. Now that I've received this power, I am reversing whatever they have done on my family and on my life. The angel on this, thank God that this is a Michael warrior. Michael the warrior. Hey, Yakadama. Thank God Michael is here. The moment Michael moves for you, go and sleep. The Bible told us that one angel killed 160,000 men in one day. If one angel that is not even Michael killed 160 people, 1,000 people in one day, how much more when Michael alone will come and fight for you? That's why this week is a peculiar week for you. Can everybody shout, Lord! Anoint my life! I still ask, if you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. Just say to him, Jesus, come into my life. I want to be born again. Wash me with your precious blood. Cleanse me, Lord. I want to be your child. I don't want to be under the bondage of sin anymore. Oh, what I did in the past, I reject them. Lord, whatever I inherited that is sin from my family, I renounce them in this church now. Break the yoke of sin. Break the power of sin. Deliver me from the power of sin. Give me a new life. I want to be born again. Jesus, I promise that from today, I will serve you all the days of my life. Oh, I belong to your family. In the name of Jesus. Everybody now say amen. amen. Everybody say Lord. Lord. Anoint me now. Release your anointing upon my life. Anointing for battle. Lord, I am ready to go. Your word say, Who shall I send? Oh Lord, here I am. Set me. Anoint me for battle. Anoint me for war. Holy Ghost. Empower me. Mighty power. Supernatural power. Come upon me now. I am hungry for you. I am thirsty for you. Anoint me now. Open your mouth and begin to pray for the anointing. Open your mouth, the anointing is falling. Pray for the anointing. Open your mouth and pray for that power. Pray for the power. Pray that the Lord will give you the anointing. Don't let it pass you by. Pray, 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 pray. Power is falling everywhere. Anointing, anointing, anointing. In the name of Jesus. All eyes close. Leka shata. You will meet the power of the anointing. Open your hand. It will come upon you now. Open your mouth. Let it enter. <sighs> Breathe in. Ah. Breathe in the power. Eleven angels are here. With Michael. Breathe in. Out. 
in, receive it. As you breathe in, receive it. As you breathe in, receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Somebody's receiving there. Everybody say, Lord. Anoint me now. Shout it again. Shout it again. The last time. Everybody say, I receive. Say it with faith. Oh, you see the anointing coming. Say it again. Again. The power has come. Get ready. Get ready. Your eyes closed. I want you to visit your father's compound now. That is where the problem is. Visit your father's home now. Visit where they are attacking you from. Carry the anointing. Enter there now. Enter. Enter. See your father's compound. Enter your father's house. Enter. Begin to clear. Everybody say, Lord. Deliver my father's house. Arise in my father's house. Oh Lord. As I receive this anointing. I arrive in my father's house now. Any satanic power. In my father's house. Blocking our progress. Tonight, I command that power. Destroy. If I call poverty, shout destroy. Poverty. Sickness. Barrenness. Failure. Delay. Disappointment. Near success syndrome. Mommy water. Spiritual husband. Spiritual wife, witches and wizard, destroy, shut it again. Your eyes closed. The hour has come. The moment, listen to me now. Your eyes closed. The moment we are going to turn around where we are seven times. When you turn, you shout fire. You turn again. I say one. You turn again and shout fire. Anything I mention. You turn one and shout fire. When I reach seven. You will shout fire without stop. Power will be broken. You will carry unction today. You are in for a surprise. Or oh, you yeah, close your eyes. Land in your father's house. If it's spiritual husband or spiritual wife. They are going. Poverty, failure, disgrace is going. Eyes closed. When I say one, you will turn and then shout. One fire. Poverty in my father's house. Let marriage in my father's house. Witches and wizard in my father's house. Failure in my father's house. Delay in my father's house. Demonic attack in my father's house. Witches and wizard in my father's house. Everybody shout fire. Begin to shout. Begin to shout. Begin to shout. Begin to shout. Tonight, you are going home loaded with power and anointing. Tonight, what stopped others cannot stop you. What killed others cannot kill you. By the virtue of this water and this anointing that have landed on you, your trouble have seen trouble today. Your trouble have seen trouble today. In the name of Jesus. From today, anywhere you land, opportunities will manifest. Anybody here with any sickness, that sickness is dried up now. In the name of Jesus. 
you will hear news from your village you will hear what has happened in the village you will hear what has taken place in the village the lord has given you victory on monday you have victory on tuesday you have victory on wednesday you have victory on thursday you have victory on friday you have victory on saturday you have victory on sunday you have victory somebody shout i have victory can you shout it better i have victory every sickness is terminated today lift your two hands up and begin to appreciate tomorrow is another day but i pray with authority power has come to take over the enemy have no place in your home anymore people in this church your thanksgiving every sunday will be wonderful why because a new upliftment if you are here and you know you started building in the village and that project is stand still you have not concluded it just stand here in the front here i tell you that building this year something will happen your amen is too poor any abandoned no, no, no member of this church especially people here will have an abandoned project whatever structure you started to build you will complete it open your hand and say Lord what I started I will complete the project I started I will complete any power fighting that project before this altar I command that power I command that force I command that demon clear by fire get out out what I started I will complete whether you like it or not devil I will complete that job from today I command money money anywhere you are in Nigeria flow to me come to me money command it shout money again I command you in Jesus name I command business opportunity to look for you here receive it in the name of Jesus your doors are open in the name of Jesus your doors are open in the name of Jesus walk in from today and make your money that project will be completed in the name of Jesus from today I touch this altar for your sake that project you started you will complete it I release you go and complete it